welcome back to online teaching of standard 7 science chapter number 12 the muscular system and digestive system in human beings let's recall muscles are bundles of fibers that can contract and relax as required voluntary muscles and involuntary muscles voluntary muscles means the functions that depend upon our will is called voluntary muscles and involuntary muscles means they do not depend upon our will is called involuntary muscles. There are three types of muscles. Skeletal muscles, heart or cardiac muscles, smooth muscles. Skeletal muscles means the two ends of each of these muscles are attached of two different bones. Heart or cardiac muscles means these muscles bring about the contraction and relaxation of the heart. Smooth muscles means the muscles are present in the internal organs other than the heart. Digestive system Conversion of food into a soluble form and its absorption into the blood is called digestion. When we are eating the food, it should soluble in the blood and absorb the blood. Blood is called digestion. The digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and digestive glands. The total length of alimentary canal is about 9 meters. Its main parts are the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and anus. The salivary glands, liver and pancreas are the digestive glands connected to the alimentary canal. Teeth The process of digestion begins with the function of the teeth in the mouth. So digestion is start begins in the mouth. There are four types of teeth namely incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Each type of tooth as a specific function. Each tooth is covered by a hard substance called enamel. Enamel is made of calcium salt. Saliva contains an enzyme. Enzyme means a substance secreted in the body of an organism which brings about a specific chemical reactions. That chemical reactions called Tylin. Tylin are otherwise known as salivary amylase. Tylin converts starch into a sugar is called maltose. The tylin that is that enzyme that chemical reaction it is converted into a starch. That starch is, in, is converted to sugar is called maltose. Mouth. Digestion of food begins in the mouth. Food is chewed with the help of teeth into very small pieces. So, digestion begins in the mouth. Glands. Saliva is produced in the salivary glands in the mouth cavity located in front of the ears. Where it is located? It is located in front of the ears, near the pharynx and below the tongue. It is carried to the mouth via ducts. Via means mouth to ducts. It is mixed with food during the process of chewing. Whether we are chewing the food, the saliva is mixed with it. Pharynx or throat. The esophagus and trachea open into the pharynx. Esophagus. It is a tube leading from the pharynx to the stomach. It pushes the food towards the stomach. So esophagus looks like a tube. Liver. The liver is the largest gland in the body. So which is the largest part? The liver is the largest gland. It has a rich supply of food. So the liver has a rich supply of food. Its main function is storage of glucose. The liver is storing the glucose. The gallbladder is situated below the liver. It stores the bile, the digestive juice secreted by the liver. When bile is carried into the small intestine, it mixes with the food there and helps in the digestion of fats so bile contains bile salts yes. the pancreas secretes the pancreatic juice that contains various enzymes 
enzymes means we already saw that it brings about a specific chemical reactions stomach the large sac like part of the alimentary canal is called the stomach stomach looks like a sac like sac like means bag like part the gastric glands of stomach secrete gastric juice food that has entered stomach is churn churn means it will digest three components of gastric juice namely hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus are mixed with food here and it becomes acidic mainly proteins are digested in the stomach due to the churning and the action of gastric juice food becomes a semi solid slurry which is slowly pushed into the small intestine small intestine the small intestine is about 6 meter long the length of the in, uh, small intestine is 6 meter long most of the digestion and absorption of food takes place here while we are eating the food the food is mostly went, uh, go, went to the small intestine and here the only the digestion will be takes place the three different digestive juices are mixed with the food in the small intestine absorption into the blood of nutrients obtained by the digestion of food also occurs in the small intestine large intestine the large intestine is about 1.5 meter long only water is absorbed in the large intestine in large intestine they absorb only the water a small part called the appendix is attached to the first part of large intestine and digested remains of the food digested in the small intestine enter the large intestine first first the food enters in the small intestine after that it will enter into the large intestine undigested material is thrown out of the body through the anus that is waste material effects of tobacco alcohol smoking on the digestive system if we consume any tobacco products the mouth pharynx alimentary canal and other organs of the digestive system cannot function properly those who are taking this tobacco products they will affect of the mouth pharynx and alimentary canal so the digestive system cannot function properly it causes problems like vomiting nausea and headache besides tobacco particles stick to the teeth gums and skin of the mouth cavity and slowly cause injury to those parts resulting in their dysfunction dysfunction means the part will not work properly in the body this causes swelling of the gums and pain when moving the jaws the pharynx and intestine become inflamed and the condition further processes into the cancer leading to death 31st may is world no tobacco day and 7th april is world health day